Hello and welcome again to my YouTube channel. My name is Ademola Badmos. You can call me Sanguine. And uh, this is the second of the series for Cypress Automation. And uh, today we are just going to talk about setting up the Cypress environment, like getting the folders for Cypress to work. And all. we are not going to get into the coding proper because not only are we going to set it up, we are going to discuss all the folders and files that comes with Cypress and um, their usage. So stay tuned. I, the intention is to make these videos as short as possible so we don't um, bore, so I don't bore people with it. And please do not forget to like and subscribe on this channel, please. And your constructive criticism is welcome because I am open to ways of improving the way I uh, deliver these tutorials. Thank you very much. So let's get right to it. In the last video, we talked about installation of Node.js and the uh, installation of the VS Code. I recommend you watch the previous video before you continue with this if you do not have any prior knowledge. So before we begin, let's just quickly talk about why automation is necessary. One basic reason it is necessary for is it helps you increase the time. It, it helps you reduce the time that you would use, you will spend doing regression tests manually. So when you have some of the tests or if most, if you can automate all of the tests, if you can automate them, it will increase your time. It will increase your time in testing by reducing the time it will take for you to complete regression tests because regression tests will probably be taking a very long time as your project develops and continues to grow. So that being said, let us try to install and set up our Cypress script. So with that, we launch our Visual Studio code, which we had earlier installed. I had earlier installed before um, I started this series. So let's wait for it to come up. Yeah. If you download and you cannot see this theme, do not worry. I only changed my theme because I just prefer this color. So you can play around your Visual Studio code later, but that's not relevant. So the two important parts that, parts that you will see on your codes, on your um, ID is um, the terminal, which you will also see on the Windows uh, screen. And you would also see this on the Windows screen as well, the Explorer part of it. So those are the places that is important for you. So you see this get started, you can just remove that. So there are two ways you can start your script without, you might launch the Visual Studio code or you can come to your terminal and um, you navigate to the folder where you want to create it. Then you type code. Then you type code. Let me just use this as an example. Then you type code. And as you can see, it is launching, it's going to launch Visual Studio code again for me inside this particular location, but I do not need this. So I will just probably just close it because this is not needed at the moment. So I'll probably just close it. So um, I haven't done that. So we get back to our script, which is here. So we want to create a folder where we are going to start writing all our codes. So we can open the Explorer, click on open folder. So I'll click on YouTube. That is where I intend to create all my videos and classes. So inside the classes, I will now create that for Cypress. So I'll say CY Cypress, CY classes. Let me call Cypress classes. So because this will cater for just the Cypress environment. So over time, as our script evolve from just the normal script to the TDD level to the BDD level, we will just continue to edit this particular folder. So we will not be creating new scripts at any point in time. So this is what we'll do. Then in addition, we would uh, also visit um, simple Git commands because we will be connecting this to our GitHub account. Or probably I will just set up a new GitLab account Then we can use the GitLab experience because um, GitLab is also a competitive Git repository tool used by companies. So that being said, let us begin. So once I open this folder, as you can see, it is there. So I can just open my terminal with this, or if I know the short keys, I can use the short keys. As you can see, it was displayed there. There are short keys. So um, with that being said, I'm not sure if this is, um, I would like to zoom it a bit. So to, oh, that is not what I intended to do that did something else entirely. Forgive me. So let's see. 
Maybe in the next video, I'll find a way to zoom it more. But let me try this and see if it will do anything. Oh, yeah, it did something. So now it is bigger. So we have this. So in our terminal, let's open the terminal a little bit. So in the terminal, let me clear this. We can begin to install. But before we install Cypress directly, it is important to create a package.json file. Why do we need a package.json file? Basically, the package.json file would allow our project to become um, usable by other people when they have access to it. They only just need to run an npm install, and everything we install use in our Cypress project will be installed for them, and they'll be able to run our project without worrying about varying versions. Perhaps let's say they have the an older version of Cypress, while we have the latest version of Cypress, there will not be a clash because they just need to install from a package.json file. So there are several ways of creating the package.json file. You can manually create it yourself or you can use the npm command to create it. One of the best practices is to use the npm command to create it. So there are two ways to create it using the npm command. You can use the npm init or you can use the npm init flag y flag y means yes so whatever it creates for you uh you just take it that way now the difference is that if you use npm in it you get to make some um editing to your to your package.json file the structure it will look like you can change the package name you can change the version if you want you can add the description like what your project is doing you can add an entry point if you know how to use it you can add a test command you can add um the your git repository you can add um your keywords from you can name it being the author of the project you can put that and you can put the license if you want to change it and um, it will not ask you if everything like this is okay then you put yes why or no if it is not okay so let us just put no we don't intend to change it this is the structure it will look like when it is done but we don't we do not intend to change it but we'll still put no and press enter so it is aborted so if we now do if we now type npm init iphone y it won't show us all those things. It will just automatically create it for us. So we have a package.json file. So when we begin to install using the save dev flag, we will be able to install it as dev dependencies into the package.json file, which is one of the things we'll do. So the next thing is we, we just go right ahead. We type npm install iPhone iPhone save dev Cypress. This will automatically install Cypress as a dev dependency into our package.json file. Now you can write it this way or you can write it this way. npm i save save dev Cypress. Or you can put the save dev behind and remove the one here. It will still work that same way. Or you can just use an iPhone D and remove the save dev at the back. This would work equally and save it as a, as a dev dependency. So you can write it in any of these ways. So let's just continue and do this and um, have it installed. Um, hopefully it should be done in a few minutes. I'm going to pause it so once it's done, we'll do it. So um, we'll continue now that it has finished installing. And as you can see, it has created a package lock.json for us and also a node modules. So briefly, let's quickly talk about the node modules and the package lock.json. The node modules is like, becomes like a repository for us. Like um, it stores all the dependencies that is needed to run the project inside that project itself. So it works within that project. You, you cannot take this node modules and take it somewhere else and try to work with it. And as you can see, as the dev dependencies, the Cypress has been installed. Then the package lock.json, this allows us um, to have all the versions of all other dependencies that is needed to run the project that came with the installation. It is given as details here. It is useful when you want to have a clean install, when you want to stick to all these versions because it differentiates between an NPM install and an NPM CI. When you are doing an NPM CI, you will be installing using your packet lock.json. It means it will be strictly adhering to all these versions here. So 
that is if you prefer to stick to all these versions. But the npm install generally might start installing from here. And if a particular version isn't available, it would it can either skip it or probably to look for a later version or something close to it and install or just keep it entirely. But for a package locked or JSON, if that version is no longer available or probably is not supported, it will probably throw an error that that particular uh, version could not be installed. So you need to find a way to fix it. But the applications vary the way you want to apply it vary. So depending on how you want to structure your project, you might just go on with NPM install or NPM CI. So with that being said, let us bring out the Cypress itself. There are two ways to bring out Cypress. You can either do this, open your node modules, then the dot bin folder and copy the path of Cypress here. You can copy the relative path of Cypress. And when you have that copied, remember to collapse this. Then you paste this here and um, type open. And it will open the runner, the test runner for the first time, if you're doing it for the first time. Or alternatively, you can just type npx Cypress open. Then they will do the same thing I've already used this. So we can um, do this. So in my VS code, I still insisted it should be using a lower version of NP uh, of node, which is 12.10. Know that I have generally, I have the 16 version on my system, so I can upgrade it later, but this one doesn't stop it from running Cypress for us. So once it opens the Cypress, just look at the folder here. You see that a Cypress folder and a Cypress.json file will be added to everything here. As you can see, has it done that? Okay, we are waiting for, oh, we have an error. It timed out. We'll probably just run the command again if it timed out. So it shouldn't be a problem. Just run the command again since it has almost brought it before. As you can see now, it will bring out the Cypress runner for us and also the Cypress folders. Okay, it's opening Cypress. It has verified it has verified Cypress for us, so it will bring out the Cypress um, runner now, and you will see it for the first time. As you can see, this is the Cypress runner loading up, and it comes usually with uh, two folders in the integration um, folder, which are supposed to start as an example on how you can run it. So, quickly, let us go through the the function of the cypress.json file and the functions of all the folders contained in the cypress folder if you're looking at my fancy icons i use the vs code icon um, extension which you can get from here if you go to extensions you will see it but it is not something that we are really focused on i can also add that instruction in the description if you want it so please let me know in the comment section again do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel so let's talk about the cypress.json file what the cypress.json file brings to the table is very powerful the ability to be able to change the configuration of your runner is done from the cypress.json file that's the simple explanation if you come to the settings and come to configuration here, all the configurations that you have here can be manipulated and change, changed using the Cypress.json file. Over time, as we begin to as we begin to build, we will be using the Cypress.json file. So do not forget that this has been mentioned earlier. So let's begin to talk about the folders. Now let's start with the fixtures folder. The fixtures folder allows you okay so let's it's important to mention that cypress as it, as it is encourages and preaches page object modeling that is my own opinion and um that being said the structure of the folder supports page object modeling a lot like the fixtures folders allows you to keep you to efficiently keep in um, your variables your files that you want to upload, your pictures that you want to upload, or any file type that you want to upload, especially the element locators that you want to use later on, you can keep them in the feature, fixture folder. And we'll be using that approach used when we are writing the code. And why are we using this approach? Because when Cypress compiles to run, the webpack, the webpack checks these folders, these 
pre-installed food, pre-loaded folders first. It checks them for the variables before it begins to check the new files and directories that you create. So what that means is that if it's going to check this by default and I put everything I need inside this, it makes it faster. But it doesn't mean that you cannot change this configuration using the Cypress.json file. You can change your fixtures directory by putting a new directory yourself. It will still function the same. So it means that every time it needs a fixture folder, it will be looking at the desired folder that you have created. The same thing for integration plugins, plugins and support. So in the integration folder, this is where you write all your tests. It is important, as you can see, there is a dot spec there. It is one of the best practices to keep your test folders, if you are not writing uh, BDD yet, to keep your test files with a dot spec naming convention. Why? Because there is a flag in Cypress that is dot spec. So it allows you to run a specific, a specific file or out of your test. Let's say, Take for instance in advanced in advanced example now you have so many files here and all you just want to run is transversal you can specify it with that cypress flag with that um, spec flag iphone iphone spec we might touch it later but um we want to move with the speed of light god willing so next one is the plugins the plugins folder what it allows you to do is that it allows you to run some node commands before the whole project runs at all so if you have some preprocessor commands that you want to run it will run here so why i'm saying this is because you will understand that when you begin to add some new dependencies into your code some will be configured inside your plugins and others might be configured inside your support folder which we'll soon talk about now so the ones configured inside your plugins means they are like they need to work with your node and they are the are uh, like preprocessors they need to work first before your project works so that's why they will be inside the index.js in the plugins folder the ones that are just like um commands that just need to run before your script runs they just need to run before your script runs will be inside your support folder they will be configured and imported inside the index.js file in your support folder so it is basically about, sorry about that, that's a call from my younger sister. So um, I would probably just call her back. So that is why this support folder is there. It allows you to create custom commands and at the same time import um, dependencies that need to run before your script runs. They are just commands that need to run before your script runs. So you just need to import them here. Then the next one is, um, that's just it, support. We've talked about support. We've talked about plugins. We've talked about integration. We've talked about fixtures folder. And we've talked about Cypress.json. So this ends our class here. And now uh, the next class we will be writing, we will first be uh, playing around with the Cypress.json file. Then we'll write our first test. And um, hope to see you there. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you in the next class. Bye for now.